Hi everyone, and welcome to the course. So, what is this course going to be about? Most economists work on a certain element of the economy and ask themselves the same question. How does it work? This is exactly the question we want to ask as economists. How does the economy work? There is no single best answer. Um, it will be very difficult to address this question because the economy consists of small parts moving together, which don't always have the same goals and intentions. To make things worse, an economy itself is a part of a giant $100 trillion enormous entity, which we call the global economy. So knowing the entire economy is not possible, but thinking about how some of its many parts work is our job. Some of the questions we address as economists are, for example, how did we end up living the way we do? What made this generation live better or worse than the previous generations? For example, the average person now in most countries across the globe lives much better than their predecessors. However, at the same time, we now enjoy less clean environment, um, and live in a more unequal and politically more unstable society than a generation ago. What led to those changes is one of the questions we address as economists. Second, there are millions of individuals and firms and hundreds of governments behind the process of economic growth. We want to know how they make choices because they're the ones driving growth. What are their guiding principles of action? Why did they make a certain decision? Of course, we will never know if each of them made the right decision for themselves, but we can think about some common traits, traits behind um, individual, individual action. However, taken separately, those decisions rarely make sense. People and firms meet in markets. We want to know what guides the interactions taking place on those markets. There are certain rules of engagement that determine the outcomes from the interactions between people, between people and firms, and between private agents and governments. Those rules also shape the outcomes of the interactions. That is why we want to know how changing the rules of the game changes the outcomes from those interactions. Sometimes, we want to know if the governments can do something about changing the rules of the game. Governments need to step in sometimes because the outcomes of the interactions between people and firms and between firms and firms are not always desirable. And sometimes governments do not want to change the rules of the game because of the dominant ideology of the government is such that achieving a better outcome for firms and citizens is not exactly on their agenda. But our job as economists is to think about how government's intervention can make things better or worse for the economy. Which brings me to the last big question we address as economists. How can governments do more to improve the way people live? The answer to this question is not only in the economics domain. We need to think how the economy interacts with the environment and what the social consequences of those interactions are. So what's our approach to tackling the problems we outlined above? We use three basic principles. In each week we are together, we will identify a significant problem that society is confronting now or has faced in the past. We do that to give you an immediate link between what you study here and the real world. Then we'll develop a basic theory to explain what we see in the real world. And finally, as a third step, equipped with the theory, we will go back to the facts and ask the question, is the theory still relevant today, or it needs certain change? There are numerous advantages of what we will do over uh, how e economics has, uh, there are, okay, so there are numerous advantages of what we will do over 
how economics was done at the A levels. I believe the crucial advantage is that you guys get to operate in exactly the same way professional economists do. So what we do is we see a problem, we look for an explanation, and we test our explanation by using recent data. Sometimes we'll also offer policy solutions to help solve the problem we began with in the first place. This is what modern teaching of the principles of economics is also about. So how are we going to go about it then? Um, each week, I recommend that you first watch the videos at home before the live lecture. The videos outline are the basics of what we're going to talk about during the lecture and the rest of the week. As you can see, the videos come with slides attached to them, so you can use those slides as talking points. After we watch the videos and go over the slides, you need to go to do the quiz. The weekly quiz is important because it gives you 1% of your final mark. We included weekly uh, quizzes to the weekly videos to make sure you watch them and have, and have got uh, ready for the rest of the week. Note that there is a forum sitting there for you. Uh, use it if you want to get in touch with your colleagues and with me or any of your uh, lecturers. I will use some of your questions to start off the weekly live lecture or to allocate them to the seminar uh, that is going to wrap up the week. Further, your participation in the forum is a chance to get in touch with me live. I'll be sitting on the forum during my feedback and office hours and addressing you, your questions there. More about those feedback and office hours a bit later. So after each live lecture, there comes a very important part of the week, the weekly homework. Together with the weekly quiz, the weekly homework forms a significant part of your final mark in this course. Start early on the homework and don't miss the deadline. Um, according to college policies, if you miss a deadline by less than 24 hours, you get a 10 points penalty. However, if you miss it by more than 24 hours, you get zero points on the assignment. So again, start early and submit on time. Typically, unless I tell you otherwise, the deadline for each of those weekly homeworks is going to be midnight on each Friday. The solutions to the more difficult parts of the homework are going to be given on the seminar after the homework deadline has passed. During those seminars, you will have the chance to ask additional questions, reflect on what you learned during the week, and hopefully um, gear your newly acquired powers to solve some important societal problems. Thus, the, the, the seminar will close the week off, after which you will be able to watch the new, uh, the new week's videos. So, that's the seven-point plan for each, each week. So where can you find the videos, uh, the quizzes, the homework setups, the class presentations, and textbook chapters, and the seminar materials? Everything will be posted on Moodle. That's our learning management system. If you have not done so, so far, um, now is the time to log on to Moodle for the principal's course and have a look around. Uh, when you get familiar with the Moodle environment, I strongly suggest that you go and create a student account at the Core Econ platform. This is where your textbook is located. Note that your textbook is free of charge and is 100% uh, online. If you prefer, you can also use the app instead of the, uh, the desktop, desktop version. Today, if it does not work on Moodle, it does, uh, sorry, if it doesn't work on mobile, it doesn't work at all, so uh, feel free to use the mobile reading and learning app as well. Now, of course, many of you are interested in, uh, in how you will be assessed. So this is the structure of assessment this year. First, each week you will get up to 1% from answering the, the few basic questions about the videos you watched. Um, every weekly quiz will be marked. Um, then you will also submit a weekly homework. The goal of those homeworks, as you can see the problem sets or homeworks, is to make you work harder to master the material, of course. Note, however, that not all, not all of, the, of these homeworks are going to be marked. Out of the planned 10 homeworks uh, that are planned for, for this term, 
only two will be marked. Um, this will be the case next term as well. So you can expect about 20-25% chance uh, that a homework you submit will be marked. If it is marked, you will get a maximum of 5% on that particular homework. You will also not know in advance if the homework will be marked or not. Um, therefore, you will have an incentive to work on and submit all of the Plan 10 homeworks for the term. There is another important reason we'll give you those homeworks. You will face similar problems on the midterm and on the final exam. The midterm exam will be held in December, around beginning of December, um, and the final exam will be during the exam term in late May or early June. Uh, please recall that you that what I told you during the induction week. Although your first year academic performance does not matter for your degree classification, it does matter in many other important ways. First of all, it brings you up to speed for the second year, which is, which will already play a role in your degree classification. Second, it also gives you confidence and self-esteem, which are very important assets uh, for the labor market. It also serves well when you apply for summer internships and jobs. Remember, your academic performance, that's your grades and marks, are highly inertial. Once you start low, uh, or if you start weak, it will be very hard to reverse that trend. And if you start strong, it's going to be easier to keep that momentum going forward. So please, as a person who's been there, I advise you, don't slack, start strong, and keep your head down for the rest of the term, because sooner than later, you will need that momentum. Of course, your lectures and seminar leaders will be there for you every step of the way. So, what are the topics that we'll discuss this term? First, we'll examine how the global economy looks like today and what brought it here. We'll dig into a brief history of the world from an economic standpoint. Second, because technological progress is so important to understand economic growth over long periods of time, we will have a look at what determines technological progress. Third, we will open the black box of decision-making. We will get familiar with what makes people tick, what makes them do the things they do, and why. We will understand their incentives and constraints and determine what's best for them. But then we will stop analyzing the individual as a lonely, lonely animal sitting on the edge of the forest and exchanging nuts for berries with other human beings. This is not how the economy works today. All actions we take are happening in an environment in which others also do the best they can. So how to determine what's the best for us, given what's best for others around us? This question will be key to understand the, four, the fourth weekly topic. Fifth, we will see that human interaction happens um, in an environment shaped by incentives and constraints imposed by others on us. These are the rules of the game shaping human interactions. We will analyze how changing the rules of the game changes the outcomes of uh, social interactions. We will see that the same people with the same goals and value systems will achieve vastly different economic outcomes, depending on how the rules of the game are structured around them. And the second part of the term will bring the, the firm into the economy. We will look at the firm from two vantage points. On the one hand, the firm is a place where three types of economic agents meet, the owners, the managers, and the employees. The firm is a place in which these three agents interact. And like we will see, those interactions are shaped by the constraints that each of those agents has. Uh, so unlike in uh, traditional A-level economics, we will look into what happens within the firm. On the other hand, however, firms don't exist only to provide a platform for social conflict between owners, managers, and employees, of course. They exist primarily to make a profit which firms generate on the marketplace. 
So we'll look into what markets are um, and how they shape the profits the firms can achieve on those markets. In other words, we'll keep asking the same question. How can a firm or any agent achieve the best it can given the incentives and constraints the market has imposed on it? As you can see, the first term of this uh, one-year module will be more about individual decision-making. The second term will give you the chance to zoom out from the individual decision-making. You will go for a bird's eye view of uh, important markets such as labor market and the credit markets. Without the proper functioning of those markets, the economy as we know it today will not be able to function. But sometimes, even if market participants do the best they can, um, the markets will generate certain failures. We will study those failures and uh, see why sometimes they lead to socially inferior outcomes. This will open the floor for limited but vital policy intervention in areas which, if left on their own, will perhaps lower the quality of our lives. We will close the second term with special topics such as technological progress, inequality, and the environment. Those topics will be a primer on a whole lot of third-year special economics courses. I say we, uh, but who do I mean by that? Here's where you can find me. I live in uh, Porton, H 213. When I say live, I don't joke. Uh, um, I will be on the weekly forum for you um, on Monday between 11 and 12, and on Wednesday between 5 and 6. Um, you can send me an email anytime. However, please note that I will be uh, replying to those emails during my feedback and uh, office hours only. You can check out what I'm currently working on on my personal website or check out some articles I post for my students on my Twitter account. In the spring, um, you will have Dr. Nunlau and Dr. Trapeznikova who will tell you how to get in touch with them separately. Last, but of course not least, a crucial part of your teaching team are the seminar leaders, um, which we sometimes call uh, teaching assistants or TAs. Uh, we will determine the TA team uh, very soon, and you'll be aware of that. So thanks for watching. Um, have a break, and go see the weekly videos now. Thank you.